Hey everyone, this is Stephen Strawn at Cast Iron Cookware, where you can find information to help you better collect, restore, and use cast iron cookware. Today, because of the coronavirus and a lot of the shutdowns, we're going to be talking about buying cast iron online. And we're going to be doing that coming right up. Before we get started, I just want to say thank you to everyone that has purchased my product, Easy Beasy Cast Iron Seasoning. The purchase of this product helps keep this channel going, and I just want to say thank you so very much. So let's get on into the video. I have quite a few pieces here that I purchased online, as you've seen in the thumbnail. Some I purchased recently online, and some I purchased maybe a few months back. And maybe one of the pieces here I purchased about a year ago, but I thought I'd throw it in there just because of the shipping issues involved. We're just going to scan around here. I have some Canadian pieces, some Birmingham Stove and Range, more Birmingham Stove and Range, more Birmingham Stove and Range. <laughs> Pretty much all of it is Birmingham Stove and Range, except for a few pieces. There's a fine X piece in there that I've shown on a video recently. Now, when it comes to buying online, you're not going to be able to put your hands on the product and just, you know, check it out really well. Now, most of your reputable people who do this, they will take many, many pictures. And if there are any casting flaws, they will show them in the picture and then point them out. I purchased this one. It's a Birmingham Stove and Range Able Skiver. If you've never seen one of these, they're kind of... They're not really what you call extremely rare, but they are hard to find. And this is kind of the telltale signs. It says Able Skiver right here. Let me get my head out of the picture so it'll focus. It says Able Skiver right here on the handle. And the back has the kind of standardized, not in all pans of BSR, but a lot of them. The little ridge on the back has a hanger hole very similar to the chef skillet and the square skillet and it says on the back it says made in usa it's got a little number two on it very simple but this is a birmingham stove and range able skiver a piece like this will ship really easily because for one it is really tough it is very bulky and less likely to chip but even though i said that it's a good idea to make sure it is packaged well. One thing when it comes to shipping, if you're selling online or if you're buying online, make some inquiries on how they plan on packaging it because you can find cast iron broke, cracked, chipped all of the time because of poor packaging. And it's not because the people didn't try, they just don't realize that cast iron weighs a lot and it will escape the packaging really easily. So no movement at all is very important. So when you pack a piece in the packaging, you want to stuff paper around the sides of it, bubble wrap. It's a good idea to use pool noodles and split them down the side and go around the rim and even stick one down on a handle and leave some sticking out just to cushion any, any uh, directional hits from that way. And a piece like this is small and it'll fit in most flat rate boxes. So there you go. Also, when it comes down to shipping, flat rate boxes are key when it comes to cast iron cookware. Now, the bigger pieces will not fit in a flat rate box. But this small little pity pat. Now, I bought this one on Iron Man. And I believe I bought this Able Skiver on eBay. But I bought this one on Iron Man. It's a Birmingham Stove and Range. You see the little... The ridge is not as prominent as you usually see, but it does have one in the teardrop hanger hole. This is a, a Petey Pat's porch skillet. And uh, some people would probably even say that this was Atlanta Stove Works, but I do believe they were made by Birmingham Stove and Range. Of course, Atlanta was the parent company of Birmingham Stove and Range. You'll see these Petey Pat's porch skillets like this one right here. If you notice, the lettering is kind of rough, and this one is a little nicer. They did that on purpose because of the novelty of it. I bought this one on Iron Man Auction. Another small piece is this little small fry griddle, and this is a Birmingham Stone Range piece. This is from the Lady Best series, even though it doesn't look like any of the Lady Best. And I got this piece here quite a while ago. Now, this is the 
Birmingham Stove and Range corn stick. This is the 7L. This is the big boy. Let's see if I can get these lined up. This is pretty much the difference in size right here, the length. But I bought this one along with a handy Dan, very similar to this one online. Of course, this one here needs a lot of work done on it. I bought this one off eBay. But I bought this one and a handy Dan as a package deal. Now this one's gonna be a little more tricky to ship. Now, this big piece will ship in one of those long, flat, flat rate boxes. Just like I said, make sure you pack them where there's no movement because those little ends can get broke off as well. But I bought this one on eBay. Now I looked at all the pictures and I knew I see, I seen the rust and I knew it had some issues, but I was happy with the price that I gave. These usually go anywhere from 75 to hundred dollars, depending on condition. And, uh, you know, you, if you get them for 50, you're doing good. But uh, this is a handy Dan corn stick pan. This is Birmingham Stove and Range. Now we don't have the ridge on the back. It's like we normally do, but we do have the handle that looks a lot like the square skillet and the, the chef skillet. Now shipping one of these will not fit in a regular flat ray box. You'll have to put in one of those, those long flat boxes and package it really well. Now I would say if you're planning on shipping, Packaging it is very, very important. Now, flat rate boxes helps a lot if you can make them fit in a flat rate box, but don't try to force them because when you do, then any kind of dropping will cause something to crack. Now, I got this one off eBay not too long ago. Now, this is a Lady Bess omelet pan. And when I first looked at it, it looked like it may have been wire wheeled, but I got it cheap enough that I went ahead and took the chance and turns out it's just never been used. It's got a little bit of a sheen to it. Uh, it is kind of rough. It's a rough casting. These were made in like 1976 and it does have a little casting flaw right here. It's a pretty good little bump. And they had that in the pictures. Now we were talking about shipping and wrapping. One thing about the Lady Best series is this is what I like about it. When you're shipping something with a handle, just take the handle off, wrap it separately. But they had it wrapped separately, had it wrapped really well, had it wrapped separately, and it was very secure in the packaging. Now, communicate with your seller and if you're selling, communicate with your buyer on how you're planning on shipping it and packaging it. Doesn't even hurt to send an email with pictures of the packaging just so they can see it. Here's another piece that I bought on eBay and it is an 80 Bauer trout pan. And it looks so much similar to the Handy Dan that a lot of people believed that Birmingham Stove and Range made the 80 Bauer trout pan. And I personally believe it as well. Now Lodge did acquire the patents of the Birmingham Stove and Range Company whenever they went out of business as part of the settlement process. I do believe this was a Birmingham Stove and Range piece. Maybe it's during the transition time of going from Birmingham to uh, Lodge. But we have a few little flaws here and they were in the pictures. It's just a little pit from the casting, another little pit on the back. And there were lots of pictures. Now, if you get online and you find somebody selling a piece of cast iron, they have one picture, ask for more pictures. And unless it's just so cheap, you're willing to take a chance. Here's another piece that I got online. And it is a Birmingham Stove and Range. Now I'm showing a lot of Birmingham Stove and Range pieces. Here is a muffin pan from the Century Series. And it says, Made in USA, right in the middle on the back. If you're interested in Birmingham Stove and Range, like I am, this is a very useful having a good picture. If you look at the back, it has almost like a honeycomb effect when it comes to the lines in between the cups. I don't know if you can see it, 
but that'll help you recognize it plus these little triangle handles that is a pretty good way to recognize the Birmingham Stove and Range pieces. A piece like this ships really well. Go around it with some uh, heavy bubble wrap or some slit pool noodles and a little bit on top, a little bit on bottom and this thing will go anywhere. I just showed this one here a while back. This is my Finex and I need to clean this one up. It's still in rough shape. This is my Finex iron grillet number 10. It's a pretty big piece and they had to put it in a regular box. Now when you put it in a regular box, you're going to probably pay a little more because of the weight. Now this is a hefty piece and when I got it, it was packed awesome. They've done a great job. Seasoned veteran when it comes to shipping and you can tell. And if you ever buy from somebody who does a good job shipping, the next time you buy from them, you're not going to be quite as afraid because you know they're going to take care of you got another piece. This is something you have to watch out for. This is the Lady Best number no. six saucepan. Now I'm trying to put together a Lady Best set. I still have a few pieces that I'm lacking. I was so excited to get this one that I forgot that I had bid it on it. <laughs> and I apparently bid it on another one. So I wound up with two of these little stew pots. That's okay, you know, never hurts to have two, right? So that will happen, especially if you're buying a lot. My biggest problem with buying online is I forget to go back and rebid. I will get outbid and I forget to go back and I'm thinking, I lost that piece and I lost it for $1 more than I started the bid on. So that happens. Just make sure you stay on top of it. And this is another thing you have to watch out for. Every group has a different way to count their time. Some of the local groups that uh, on marketplace that has auctions, they will start their time. If the auction ends at five o'clock, it ends at five o'clock. As soon as it clicks over from 4.59.59, boom, it's over. Then some of them will stay on five o'clock until the next minute. So read the rules of the group and see, because I've lost a few things like that. Another thing to watch out for is time zones. Uh, I buy a lot from Iron Man auction and they're an hour ahead of me. So I have sat around thinking, well, I'm going to go bid just as soon as it gets close. I go back and the auction's over. It's been over for nearly an hour. That was my boo-boo. Lost a few good pieces that way. So, you know, be, be mindful of the timestamps and how each individual auction site works. You can also check out some of the other sites. There's a cast iron community sales, there's some Canadian sales groups. Tell you what, I will leave as many of those links as I possibly can in the video description. Um, all the way from eBay on down to Ironman Facebook auction, the cast iron community sales, the uh, cast iron cutlery and patriots. There's quite a few on there. There's some Canadians there too. And speaking of Canadian pieces, I got this GSW Canadian piece. I got this one from a guy in Canada. He had it on Marketplace, and I've got a friend in Canada that keeps an eye out for me up there. He says, there's one on Marketplace. You want to check it out? So I checked it out, and I actually got, I believe I got both of these pieces. I got this GSW and this nice little Finley. Let's take a look at this GSW. It looks a little bit like a Wagner on the end, or the later Griswolds. And... Uh, it's a nice little number three. The handle is kind of, uh, I guess you call it fluted on the inside or tapered. It's not solid, which makes it a little bit lighter. And it feels really good to pick it up. Uh, we have some lettering on the inside here. Plus we have, let's get it right, GSW. Number three, made in Canada fry pan. These Canadian pieces are really nice. And when I started picking up a few Canadian pieces, I got excited. And I got some friends up there in Canada that have really helped me out, you know, with learning a little bit about them and kind of what to look for. And I'm telling you what, these Canadian pieces are really nice. Here's another one that I bought with that one. And I bought both of these and I'll from this guy in Canada. Here is a Finley 
which, uh, which is a nice little piece. And it's a Canadian piece. Very similar, the handle, very similar to the GSW. I wouldn't be surprised that the same company made both. I'm not really sure. This is a number six, smooth bottom, just like the other one, and it feels really nice. It's a good little piece. When buying from Canada, one thing that's kind of nice is the conversion rate between Canadian and U.S. You will pay a little less. Uh, now you have to watch out because things change, so don't get caught up in a specific number. A lot of times you think you'll buy a piece and you're, you know, it's showing on there for, you know, $40 and you'll get on there and the conversion rate will be $30. So you may save $10. And another thing too, shipping from Canada is less expensive than shipping to Canada. I got this friend that we done some swapping and here's a piece that we done some swapping on. He wanted a number seven Birmingham stove and range. So I sent him a number seven and he sent me a number eight and it's a McClary drip spider. Now this is a nice little piece and it is a great cooker. It has a pretty solid handle with a little bit of a kind of like the Southern Mystery Skillet's little ridge down the back. And the handle is really wide right here where it's, you know, really can fit in the palm of your hand well. One thing that my friend said that he liked the, the big handles like that because you had something to get a hold to and it wasn't so hard on your hands. And uh, he said he really liked that. And he said, I've got one I'll send you. So he sent me a number nine from Canada and I sent him a number seven from here. Now his got to me twice as fast as mine got to him. And uh, mine cost twice as much. So the shipping is cheaper from Canada. Now, if you're gonna ship to Canada, you're gonna pay a little bit for it, I'm just gonna tell you. I think uh, you're, you're gonna pay 30, $40 if you're gonna ship to Canada, especially a large piece. And uh, that's one of my favorite Canadian pieces and has a great Canadian story to it. Now here's another one I've got off eBay and this is a Smarts. This is another Canadian piece. Try to get it where the light's just right. And it's a smooth bottom. The handle is much like the GSW and the Finley. Very, very similar, almost identical. The only difference is the actual marking or brand on the cast iron. Glass, slick finish. I still haven't, this is as is the way I bought it. Still haven't done anything to it. I just hung it up in the, my Canadian section in the pan cave. My Canadian section is growing. And uh, this is a kind of a large piece. This is like, like the number nine. Uh, a flat rate box pretty much will not take it. But... Uh, you know, you'll have to deal with a little more expensive shipping when it comes to that. Then I got another piece off of eBay. This is a GSW. This is a number nine. And uh, it is a flat bottom. And we have a wood handle. You'll see this handle similar on some of the Griswolds. It is a nice little piece. I'm hoping to put together some more of these. It's uh, really well made. So the Canadian pieces are put together really well for the ones that I've seen. And I'm sure there's a lot more there. And there's some Canadian Facebook groups that if you want to learn more about Canadian pieces, I will leave a link to those groups in the video description as well. And just like I said, because of the coronavirus and the lockdowns, us going out into the wild and, and just looking in antique stores and flea markets is getting kind of hard to do right now. Hopefully all that will change. But until then, you're shopping online, just you know, follow those guidelines. You know, make sure your packaging is well. Uh, also make sure that you understand shipping costs. When shipping to foreign countries or from foreign countries, be aware that it will take time now, so until we can get back in the wild, I just want to say happy hunting online. I hope that you've enjoyed this video, and if you have, please don't forget to subscribe, hit the notification bell, and I promise I'll keep more of them coming. Every subscription and like 
makes a huge difference in the growth of this channel. You can also check out Cast Iron Cookware on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. Check out the Cast Iron Cookware Facebook group. We're working on changing the name of our website from cicookware.com to easybeasy.com. Hopefully that'll be done in the next month or so, and it'll be a little easier for you to find my product, and hopefully I will have some other products to add to the list. And I just want to say thank you again for watching Cast Iron Cookware. Before you go, I just want to share something with you really quick. In 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 13 through 17, it says, But I would not have you to be ignorant, brethren, concerning them which are asleep, that ye sorrow not, even as others which have no hope. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so them also which sleep in Jesus will God bring with him. For this we say unto you by the word of the Lord, that we which are alive and remain unto the coming of the Lord shall not prevent them which are asleep. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, and with the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And so we ever be with the Lord. Wherefore, comfort ye one another with these words. I just want to say, share the word and be a blessing.